All right, where we left off last time was we had data managed out any of the values in our variables that, that we needed to change. Either we changed them to a different value or we eliminated them completely because we didn't know enough about what was going on with that person to analyze them for that particular variable. Okay, so that's where we left off. What we're going to do now, and we only have to do it for our categorical variables. You never do what's called formatting, and that's what we're doing next. You never have to do formatting for quantitative. Okay, so it's only for categorical. And the deal is, with categorical vari variables, I have values like 4 and 1 and 3 and 2. And in this other categorical variable, 0 and 1. What the heck do those mean? Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back to the to the um, code book. Oh, yeah. For my asthma variable, zero means no, and one means yes. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if on this table, instead of saying zero and one right here, that there's 4,324 zeros, it'd be nice if you saw on this table that there were 4,324 no's. So that's the goal for formatting, is you're, you're replacing the numbers with the words that those numbers mean, so that when you have an output, you have some graph or chart or whatever, that everybody can read what it's telling us. It's not using these codes for things. I don't have to do that for a quantitative variable because, okay, granted 97 didn't mean 97 is the age that they were diagnosed with asthma because 97 was the code for legitimate skip. And similarly, 96 was the code for refused and 98 was the code for I don't know. But we've gotten rid of those. After we did that, all we have is this, these people, all 66 of these people were diagnosed with asthma at age 12. These were diagnosed with asthma at age one. These were diagnosed with asthma at age five. If this is the age diagnosed and it's a quantitative variable, so these numbers mean what they say they mean. There's no need to, to format to make these more readable, they already are what they are, okay? So the formatting, again, is just for our, our categorical variables where the database has code numbers in there, but we wanna say what these actually mean. So how do you do that? And it's two, a two-part process. So it's just scrolling down till I get to it. And Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, here I am, and, and I've got a little heading here that here's where I'm formatting eyewear. So the first part of that is creating what's called a function. And so the syntax for creating a function is you still you start by using this keyword def, def. It stands for defined, but you just do def space, and then the name that you've chosen for that function. And I'm I've chosen the name eyewear FMT, standing for eyewear format. And then you put what I call a dummy variable, you know, use X, use whatever you want in here. But this is within the function, how we're going to um, refer to, to where we're going to get this stuff. And so what we're basically saying is, I'm going to take any time that I wear was equal to one, we're going to replace that one with the word, it's called a string, the string eyeglasses. So notice that I don't have quotes around the one because it's actually a number. And I do have quotes around eyeglasses because it's what's called a string. And so when anytime it finds a one, it's gonna replace it with the word eyeglasses. Anytime it finds a two, it's gonna replace it with the words contact lenses. Anytime it finds a three, it's gonna replace it with both. Every time it finds a four, it's gonna replace it with neither. How do I know that that's what all these mean? Well, I looked at the code book. Just like I saw that zero meant no and one meant yes for my asthma variable, if I searched up my eyewear variable, it would show me what all these numbers meant. And what this is doing is setting up this function that's going to change the numbers into words. And then this line actually changes the numbers into words. So for this line, I'm taking my eyewear variable and I'm replacing it with this thing that uses this function to replace all the numbers with with letters. So notice in here that I don't have to have the name of the variable because that's actually inside the function. Eyewear is inside the function. I have to have the name of the function. So eyewear format is what goes here. And then everybody's going to put access equals to one. OK, 
Okay. So when I do that and then run a summary cat um, frequency distribution table, I've got the same counts, the same percentages, but instead of all those numbers, I've got these words. So I did that same kind of thing with asthma. I made this, I defined this function asthma format. I said every time asthma was a zero, replace it with a no. Every time asthma had a one, you're going to replace it with a yes. And then I had it do that. And now when I look at the table, it looks like that. So these two tables are what you're going to use for your, for your slides. When I look at my slide for the formatting slide, it's just my categorical variables. It shows what the functions that you used are and that you used this correctly. But then it's, it's just got the new formatted table. It's got the variable name. And then instead of these codes, it's got words. Okay. So I want to spend just a second talking about something called indentation. I know I'm already at six minutes. I'm going to try to say this within one minute. If I had run this, and instead of having this indented, I didn't indent. Oops. I just had it all on one line. Hopefully you can see the difference. Notice everything is turning to red. And if I tried to run this code, it says ah, indentation error. And what that means is when you're defining a function, everything inside that function has to be indented. So I've just um, highlighted everything and I'm pressing the tab. Now it's all indented one. And that's great for some of them, but some of them are still red. That's because on this if statement, it says if the variable um, asthma is equal to zero, then you have to have this colon. And, and notice this is an equals equals, not just equals. It's equals equals. <laughs> um, so if this is all happening, then you're supposed to return zero. Well, that return zero has to be indented. And as soon as I indent it, the red goes away. Well, if it's not zero, but instead it's one, then we want to return yes. I have to indent that. And then if it's anything else, return nothing. I have to indent that too. Now this works. And now this works. And it's got it like that. Okay. Um, hopefully that helps you with some of your questions. I'm hoping that that helps um, you answer all the questions on the quiz that goes with this. And I'll see you in class. Bye.